A very good morning to you. It is Wednesday, January the 20th. I'm Michael Rowland. And I'm Lisa Miller. You're watching News Breakfast. After four chaotic years, Donald Trump has began, begun rather his last full day as President of the United States, with Washington preparing for tomorrow's inauguration. The crowds won't be there, but in their place, nearly 200,000 flags have been installed in the National Mall to represent them, along with 56 pillars of light. Along with the ceremonial preparations, there's also very tight security, with up to 25,000 National Guard troops flooding into the US Capitol. Donald Trump is expected to spend his last day in office issuing presidential pardons, but he's reportedly decided not to preemptively pardon himself. It's a huge day. Correspondent Greg Jennett is on the streets of Washington, D.C. Good morning, Greg. This is uh, normally a very exciting time. Thousands of people pouring into Washington, D.C. Tell us, what's the mood like there today? Not this time, Lisa. There are only numbers in the dozens here and we're very close to the White House where Donald Trump is going to spend his final night. It seems rather privately we've heard little from him at all. The reason that the crowds are so sparse of course is the tight security clampdown which goes up yet another notch tonight our time. But in stark contrast to all of this the Joe Biden story begins and started a short moment ago in his hometown of Wilmington, Delaware. A very emotional appearance, public appearance it was by the president-elect. He's going to make his way to the street just behind me. He'll be overnighting in Blair House, which is within the White House precinct. His overnight stopover before he moves into the White House proper tomorrow. But he was emotional. He was at a National Guard Reserve Centre named after his late son, Bo Biden and he did break into tears as he expressed deep remorse and regret that his son couldn't be here to watch him be introduced as president and he spoke as he farewelled his home state of Delaware of that state being written on his heart when he dies. And Greg, the changeover to the uh, new tenant of the White House happened, has to happen very quickly in a matter of hours. Uh, a deep clean of the White House this time, given the pandemic that you're all facing. Uh, what has the outgoing president been doing? We haven't seen him for a week or in person at least. Taking away the megaphone of social media has made an enormous difference to the Donald Trump presidency. There are the pardons still to come. They're expected by this evening our time. But other than that, his mood and whereabouts are largely unreported. No one knows until he makes his move tomorrow to Florida with his wife Melania. He of course won't be attending or going anywhere near the inauguration itself. So he'll fly over the top of the Capitol as he makes his way to Air Force One at Joint Base Andrews. So not too much to report about Donald Trump, but a very high profile from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. They'll actually be attending a ceremony tonight to honour the people, the 400,000 people who've died from the pandemic. That's going to be a light-filled vigil on the National Mall, again, within that ring of steel. Yeah, they're, they're trying to, to give it the feel of an inauguration without the people. Tell us about these flags. They're meant to represent each and every United well, member of the United States, plus its territories as well. Uh, there's also a nod to allies and to some of the people, again, who've lost their lives in the pandemic. They won't completely fill all of the lawns, which normally could be occupied by up to a million Americans on an inauguration day. There won't be a single person there who's not security screened, working for the media or in some other way accredited. But they'll try to populate those lawns with these flags. Uh, hundreds of thousands of them are already being spiked in and they'll be uh, brilliantly lit throughout the night tonight as well. Yes, and Greg, we're just seeing live pictures of Joe Biden now after delivering that emotional speech. We'll be uh, bringing more of that to everyone throughout the morning. Uh, there he is, the uh, incoming president, a very big 24 hours. He's got uh, 
a, uh, a big 100 days ahead of him. Certainly that is going to be where all the focus is and he says that uh, uh, it, he is going to be kicking it off very quickly with uh, news about the uh, immigration moves that he's going to make. Can you tell us something about that? Yeah, well, the, it's certainly an ambitious agenda for the first 100 days and he'll be signing an executive order along with one which re-enters America into the Paris Climate Accord. He'll be signing an executive order that in part removes those predominantly Muslim travel bans that Donald Trump had slapped on so early in his term. But there are up to half a dozen, at least, that the president does intend to sign on day one, and some of them relate to mask bans as well, so mask mandates as well on federal property. Uh, that's his agenda, although it must be said that the shadow of Donald Trump still hangs over Washington DC and will once he leaves this city too. Very interestingly today on Capitol Hill, Mitch McConnell, the Republican majority leader there, has found his voice to pretty much condemn Donald Trump now in ways that he hasn't so far for that siege of the Capitol. And it's a striking comment from Mitch McConnell when you consider the relationship that he had with the Trump White House for those four years, it's obviously estranged and damaged now. The mob was fed lies. They were provoked by the president and other powerful people. And they tried to use fear and violence to stop a specific proceeding of the first branch of the federal government, which they did not like. But we pressed on. We stood together and said an angry mob would not get veto power over the rule of law in our nation, not even for one night. So I'm not sure what uh, Mitch McConnell's words tells us about the uh, trial of Donald Trump on his second impeachment charge, but it is significant nevertheless that he's reflecting in that manner as the president seeks, uh, is about to board in uh, less than 24 hours now and leave this city, I suspect, for a very long time, Lisa. It was a very deliberate message there from Mitch McConnell. Greg Jennett, thank you very much.